Hello everybody and welcome to week four of English as a medium of instruction for academics. Uh, thank you once again for all the great input we've had. Um, not many people are commenting at this stage at the time of making the video, but those of you who are are really adding a lot of quality to the discussions. And as I said in the last video, you know, bringing a lot of yourselves and your different perspectives into what we're talking about from language teachers' perspectives, um, support staff perspective, and also lecturers' perspective. So it's really, really good to see. Um, so thank you very much. I've really enjoyed and learned a lot from this run of the MOOC. And um, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you very much and remind you of the um, the possibilities of staying in touch, you know, keep an eye for future runs of this course. You can come back in and just see what discussions are happening on the steps that you found interesting this time. You know, you might find somebody from your context or somebody who provides really good advice that would benefit you in your role. So you don't have to do, you know, the whole course again, but you can come back and just see that or connect, as I said, with Facebook. Um, and also, I'd just like to pull out a couple of points that were particularly interesting. Um, Alicia uh, drew particular attention to teaching online because lots of people are doing that now and mentioning how that forces us to see how effective student-centred teaching can be, um, you know, increasing student participation, um, the importance of preparation, you know, sending questions in advance or giving tasks for students to do outside of the classroom and then applying the live teaching to something that everybody can be more involved with. And I think that's it's been really interesting. I think this this period of time with the COVID pandemic has been really interested interesting in reinforcing a lot of what people said about education. Um, you know, what students are actually capable of doing and effective ways of learning that don't um, prioritise teacher control, particularly around communication, because that's something we've talked a lot about. And we've seen, you know, we're, we're forced to give them tasks and to give them more independence to work on their own. And lots of the students that, you know, I've dealt with have found ways of doing that really effectively and arguably more effectively than they do in face-to-face -face teaching. Obviously, you lose some important, important aspects of the physical space, but I think that was a really important point, um, that what we're discussing here about ways of engaging with students, contextual needs that students have and how we can make them, and also this extended point that teaching online should have taught us a lot about how we can teach students and how we can hand more to them, more freedom to them to engage. The other side of that that I found interesting this week was in a discussion between, I'm just checking my notes, uh, Togu, Rutha and Priscilla, who raised really good points about students' engagement and students' confidence, um, which might be, they might lack confidence to engage in the class they might not want to speak for particular reasons. And I interpreted lots of those reasons as ideological. You know, they don't feel they have the right accent or it could be ability based. They don't have the necessary vocabulary to feel that this is what somebody in my research said, you know, to feel they can touch the subject matter with their language. You know, if, if it were in their first language, they feel they, they're in control and they can really sense a connection to what they're saying. And sometimes people lack that in another language. And But I really like the idea that Bilal put forward, that it's the accountability of the teacher. You know, it's the responsibility of the teacher to make sure students understand their role in communication. That, you know, we can't just let them be nervous and carry ideologies that will be harmful for their development, that will that will keep them quite passive and not allow them to to try to communicate, to be to make mistakes with, you know, without um, the fear of negative judgment. And I think it's our responsibility. I agree with Bilal. You know, it's the, it's our responsibility to create that atmosphere, to create that understanding 
where if our teaching relies on students' communication, that we need to manage that environment to make communication as free, as flexible, as not intimidating as possible. So yeah, that's a really good point. And I really like the discussion. There were some good points they made. I've paraphrased it and have removed some of the, the um, kind of, nuanced meaning that they had in their comments so apologies about that but do go back and have a look at that that was really interesting and I'd like to finish with Beatrix's point Beatrix I, I like this quote and I'm going to read it it's our job to reinforce unity not uniformity in diversity in learning practices so I really like that idea you know that as a class, as a group of learners, with you included as the teacher who's facilitating this, you know, you want unity between them, cooperation, shared goals, shared behaviours, shared ideas, you know, even though there might be diversity in the group, you know, we want to be pulling in the same direction. We want to be prioritising the same things. And that's not judging people negatively on their language. You know, it's it's a spirit of communication and engagement and a feeling that whatever that whatever language they're using, whatever tools they're communicating with, that that's of value to their development. And if they understand that, I find most particularly adult learners will engage, you know, quite happily eventually. But again, there's a lot you have to do to manage that situation. So thank you for that. And again, we're not going for uniformity. We're not trying to say everybody must speak the same. Everybody must learn in the same way because we know that doesn't work. And there have been great comments on here about that. So I'm going to keep this video quite short because we have a, I'm really happy that we have Mary making a video appearance, um, which she hasn't been able to do. But it's great that she has been watching in the background and um, I know you'll be familiar with her face, but not in these videos. So um, please do watch that. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank you all once again. It's been really interesting to read your comments and we always find the value of this course comes from what you put in rather than what we have set up in advance. And I'd like to thank you for that very much. And remind you, this does stay open for a few weeks so you can continue to engage, discuss, possibly network with people. Um, if you if you find somebody has an interesting view and you'd like to engage with them further, then, yeah, I'd recommend, you know, for your professional development, stay in touch with people, you know, continue the critical discussions going forward, share ideas. And, yeah, it's a good space to make new acquaintances and friends. So thank you very much and um, yes, possibly see you somewhere else in future. Who knows where it will be? But thanks again. Bye bye. Bye bye.